As a designer and TV host for the last 18 years, I've helped people achieve the home of their dreams. With so many of us rethinking how we live right now, I wanted to help bring real life solutions to people who are ready to transform their homes with simple, easy to achieve solutions. This is In The Room with John Giddings. Today I'm designing for Pascaline. She's got a brand new house in Nantes, France. It's 50 square meters. It's a loft from what I can tell. It's got a sort of artist's loft above the main residence that you can only access via a ladder. She's asked to open up the kitchen. Hello, I'm Pascaline. I'm a Metro D and my boyfriend Merwan, he's a software engineer. We just bought a 50 square meters apartment in Nantes in France. We'd love to open up the space, break the bar that's existing, have a very simple kitchen, soft colors, some wood, not too many appliances. We'd love to have a pellet burning stove, have lots of lights and lots of plants. Thank you very much. This is an artist's loft. How exciting. There's so much potential here, but Pascaline would like a much more open vibe. Now, she has created a set of dimensions for me here that are all in centimeters. So I'm going to have to relearn the metric system and how it corresponds to typical kitchen nominal dimensions that I'm used to. So even though we're designing for a house in Europe, we can make this work. Pascaline is used to living in a kitchen with few appliances and she's asking for even fewer. So I love that concept because that way we can just focus on making the whole space feel open and clean. If we were to remove the bar exactly as is, we would have an inelegant profile for the edge of the kitchen. Instead of leaving the step as is, I think what we should do is straighten out the front of the kitchen so it's a nice, long, clean step at the front. Now what that leaves us with is a nice, big, open space for this kitchen. And that's why I'm thinking we take this countertop and we pull it all the way back. Now we've got a very classic L-shaped kitchen. The sink is located right here in the countertop and I'm gonna keep it exactly where it is. And in this divot space, in this little sort of alcove, I'm going to center a brand new range. And she also mentioned she would like to install eventually a pellet burning stove. Now, I've actually never installed a pellet burning stove. I'm assuming you know what you're talking about, Pascaline, and you know the venting requirements that are needed. Luckily, there's an old fireplace right next to the kitchen. Put your pellet burning stove underneath the chimney and make sure you also install a hearth because pellet burning stoves, all stoves, generate a lot of heat and you wanna make sure that any of the wood surfaces nearby are not getting hot. There's a couple different ways of increasing the size of the skylight. One way of doing it is by maintaining one of the boundaries and pushing all the way in the other direction. I think the better skylight improvement is to increase it from the center out. This obviously is the more expensive undertaking because now you have to rip up more of the roof. But I say keep that skylight centered and really increase the size as much as you can. So I think it's actually a really great idea that you wanted to get rid of both bars, but I recommend only shrinking the small bar off to the right. The big bar that embraces the corner, let's get rid of it entirely, bring it all the way down to the ground. The little bar, we only need to reduce the height of it by about, mm, it looks like 20 centimeters. Why do we want to do that? I want to keep that tiny little bit of extra countertop space so it nooks into that column that the living room starts from and that the hearth is based on. The other big difference here is that nook, that sort of long thin nook that we're gonna center the range on, let's fill it in. So from the ground up to maybe eight or nine inches over countertop height, we fill in that nook. And then over that filled in space, we have three long shelves. This is a great way of bringing that wood accent back in. I'm putting shelves here. You could end up putting hooks and do a whole sort of range of pots and pans. That could be great. Again, keep it useful for you. It's worth it for a house like this to try to match the wood types that they already have in there. So this beautiful detail that opens up the archway into the kitchen, let's maintain it if we can. In fact, as you're demolishing it, maybe keep some of that wood around so you don't have to replace quite so much. The floor surface, I think, should be a patterned tile. Um, now, this is because we've got a sort of orange existing tile at the entryway and then hardwood flooring in the living room space, but I think a brighter tile would go better. Finally, lighting. This is crucial. 
In any artist's loft, lighting should be one of the most important considerations. And for this project, I've picked this really cool light fixture. It's got multiple verticals and horizontals. It sort of floats in the space and holds out these globes in a bunch of different locations. All right, Pascaline, I hope you liked what I've designed for you. This is an incredible space that you've got over in Nantes. If you implement any of these designs, I absolutely have to see the photographs. And for the rest of you with design questions, why don't you write in? I would love to help you. And if there's any questions that I didn't get to, make sure you comment in the comment section below. See you next week. If you've got a home makeover project you need help with or a room you'd like to reimagine, drop us a DM at shelter on Instagram and tell us your story. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss a new episode.